My name is Darren Lackin and I am Art Director of Crow Street Collective. Uh, I'm based in Dublin in Ireland. So this is my model Sophie and today what we're going to do is we're going to get creative with Collis and Perfect. So the look that we want to create is salon friendly and um, it has a kind of a street vibe to it. It's kind of cool but it has a little bit of a modern twist. So the inspiration behind the colour palette and the look has come from spring summer uh, 2019. So the Pantone uh, colour of the year is Living Coral. So what we wanted to do was take that and rework it by using Collis and Perfect. So by applying that to our colours and different tones, what we kind of wanted to create was a look tr throughout the hair, makeup and clothes. So as we look into this spring summer trend, we have a lot of tie dyeing. So tie dyeing is you know, massive back in the 80s and it's making a comeback, but it's trying to make that cool and relevant. So what we also wanted to do within the colour was to take the colours that's in Sophie's clothes and bring it into the hair is almost give it a tie dyed stonewash kind of denim feel. <laughs> This is my beautiful model, Sophie. So what I'm actually doing is Sophie has been pre-bleached and pre-toned. So I'll just pop this forward so you can have a little look. So really, we're working with what was previously in Sophie's hair. So you can see in some areas, we have some kind of, kind of old color that has been there. It has been cleansed out, but we have some kind of small little pieces of an old kind of colour, fresh create that was in there. And so it just kind of has a slightly kind of green tone. But don't worry about that, we're going to work with what we have and we're going to be using our Collis and Perfect uh, Me Plus. So we're going to be using some pink tone and that's going to neutralise any of those kind of unwanted tones. So it's going to give us actually the opportunity to get creative with Collis. So I'm dampening down Sophie's hair because I want to apply the colour on uh, damp. So essentially, we are going to be um, kind of toning the entire head. We're going to be using a very classic herringbone technique, which is very easy, again, salon friendly, and very easy to adapt to uh, different clients within the salon. So I think the thing with the colour category, you know, is this, has to be salon relevant, but by that it doesn't have to be boring. So we're kind of thinking using cool mixtures, um, creating texture, movement within the hair. And we're all gonna do it with using Collis and Perfect Me Plus. So we're just coming to the last couple of pieces of self hair. Well, let's try not to be on her lovely makeup. So to talk you through the colours, the base colour, we're kind of using a very kind of soft, kind of woody pinky tone. So we're using our uh, 10 stroke 97 in Colours and Perfect with some 5565, five, very small amount of that. It's going to give us a very soft, kind of beautiful pinky tone. So I'm going to take out a deep horseshoe section. And this is where a herringbone technique is going to come in from the crown working right through to the top of the head. Sorry, I mean from the crown to the hairline. The nice thing about working with damp hair is it's much easier to section.
keep giving it a little damp. A little damp down. So the inspiration for this kind of colour palette has come from the kind of Pantone colour of the year, which is Hyper Coral. So it's taken that and interpreting it in your own way. So we have a massive range of colours within the Colors and Perfect Me range. And again, it's about getting creative. Taking mixtures, mixing them together, you know, in order sometimes for to get something or in a new, a new kind of tone within, you have to make a, a couple of uh, mistakes for tones. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. That's the beauty of playing around with the colours. So we're going to take the top section out. So it's a horseshoe section through the top. So we're going to start applying our base colour. So again, this is our 10 stroke 97 with our 5565. So the 5565 in there is going to neutralize this kind of unwanted kind of tone that we have to here. So again, this will show you how we can use the right mixture to eliminate any kind of tones, green tones, blue tones that we don't want in the hair. So we're just taking diagonal sections, just applying their root tone. Make sure you have plenty, plenty of colour onto it. So we're going to it slightly offset kind of brick working technique. You can see as I lift it here, you can see these kind of greeny tones. But when we bring the colour through, it will neutralise this now. I'm just using my tone just to pull out the hair. And we can see that the tone is starting to take. So we're getting a very, very soft, kind of rosy tone. So I think you find from photographic to you know, the actual regional heats. This is when you kind of get the opportunity then to kind of play around with your tones because you're working on an actual model. So I think it's really important then to, you know, get together 
as a group get together with the salon, sit down and kind of work on your colour palette. So I think it's very important for you to have a clear vision of what you're doing and you know what you're trying to achieve and then go out to achieve that. Because the more preparation you have, you've done, it just makes it so much easier on the day. No surprises. Say that to me again. Oh yes, sorry. <laughs> you alright? Keep your little feet going around. <laughs> So I still think kind of tones are still becoming very, are still very soft for next season. I mean, even within the clothes, you'll find that tones are, are still, you know, ever so slightly pastelized. And I do think a lot of the time that we tend to go for other brands in the portfolio, um, within the Wella portfolio, and we kind of forget that the strength and the ama amount of uh, kind of beautiful colors that we have in uh, Colors and Perfect. Again, don't be afraid to use your fingers. I think like, you know, like smudging and blending, you know, there's still words that we hear uh, in the salon and on the salon floor. So again, it, these kind of, you know, kind of techniques are gonna kind of blend out and kind of bleed uh, the colors out a little bit more into one another and then sometimes you know when you're kind of true colour you can almost find that when you take the roof from roots through to ends that you get this really really soft kind of beautiful tone and sometimes that's enough so you know visually you know you need to watch look what you're doing see what's happening see what way the hair is reacting and sometimes you know when you kind of pull it out there's no need for colour on the end so really really use your eye So again, working towards the front. Still on our base color, so our 1097 and 55 stroke 65. So just to give a slight bit of, you know, kind of lightness towards the front, just in an offset triangle. Here, in the front of Sophie's hair, we're actually going to do a 10 stroke 9.5, and in with that, we have our mixed tone. So we have a very small amount of 0 stroke 6.5, 0 stroke 4.3, and 0 stroke 3.0. So a very small amount in each one, each one of those. So this little offset panel, when the hair is styled, is gonna kind of throw our shape a little bit. So we're going to work through application. So we're really all trying to create, and because Sophie's hair is short, we're really trying to create a shape within a shape. And there's no better way to do that than with color. And again, don't be afraid if colours overlap ever so slightly because what you're doing, you're creating more tones and more depths. So don't worry. So I'm going to work from the top of the triangle. And take it back away from the face. So this again is going to create a very soft kind of peachy, corally tone. And again, lighter tones around the face always work. 
And we're still trying to make this salon relevant. You know, it's kind of something that you still could do, you know, on a, on a client in the salon. It's all about adapting. You can see even visually, you can see it looks quite good as well. So I'm gonna move Sophie around. She'll be getting dizzy. So we're gonna be working our base color to the back, diagonal section. And we're going to take the same shape and offset triangle, but smaller on the opposite side. We don't want to, we want to create symmetry. We don't want it to be too even on both sides. Again, we're just creating shapes within the hair. So again, visually, it's so nice actually to, again, freehand, you know, looking at things and, you know, look in the mirror, have a little check and see, you know, see what's, what, maybe what will work, you know, maybe at the front, at the side, you know, through the middle ends and ends. So again, when we apply the colour, don't be afraid of it overlapping, you can very slightly use your finger, smudge it in, and again, you're creating a new tone, a new blend. Again, taking the hair away from the face, we're gonna apply it onto the roof. So another trend that's quite big, actually clothes this season, fashion this season, is tie-dye. It's almost like a play on a, on a, a surfer kind of, kind of girls and create a character. And it's this very kind of soft, kind of beautiful blend and cool colors. So you see when you, you and two there visually, if I turn to the side, thank you. We're creating kind of shapes and waves and colors. So I'm just gonna take some um, wraps and then just kind of, it's just, it's just a section it off, it's just to make it easier. Um, a more visual just for the front. Okay, so we just have our sections. We still have Sophie's hair quite nice and damp. So we're going to use our herringbone technique. From the back. So in this one, we're actually gonna use our new mixture. So we have our 834 and our 897. So again, it's giving us a really soft and a coppery tone. We're gonna also intermix that with our um, 5565 and 10 stroke 97. So once we have the route on, 
kind of going to work diagonal back again it's just it's just directional because it makes it much easier to apply the color without having to use like wraps or foils and even through the root color you can see here you can just blend soft and smudge So again, as this is visual, you have your kind of three tones, so you can kind of intermix them. I'm going to bring this tone through. Pull it through from the root. And take the excess off. So these offset sections within the herringbone technique, again, it's very visual. And the thing about it is we don't want it to be too perfect. This is the beauty of colouring is that, you know, sometimes with an imperfection, it actually makes the colour sit on top of each other, like the layer and the colour sitting on top of each other way better. It's way more, um, the, the, the impact of it is so much nicer. Okay, so with our next tone sitting here, we're gonna go in with our 10 stroke 9.5 with equal parts of a um, 6.5, 4.3 and 3.0 mix tone. So again, apply onto the root. And what this gives is from here, if I turn Sophie around, a slight continuation from this tone. So what we're doing is we're creating shapes within the hair. So constantly keep thinking of what you're placing and why you're placing it there. Again, from a competition perspective, this is what you'll need to know and this is what you need to kind of say and tell the judges because you do, you know, get a chance to explain uh, what you've done and how you've done it. So again, just working back. So we're gonna calm from the root. As you can see, that gives us almost like a flamey texture going from the root out into the end. So just really work. So our next section. You're gonna work uh, 1097 and 5565. 
So again, it's all the colors that you're using are being like reused throughout the color. So it, there's no, you know, just kind of a, of a random patch of color. Everything has a reason for being there. This is kind of all part of your color story. So again, both on the diagonal back. Down, okay. So at this time we're going to bring the colour through straight onto the end because we've combed through here. So what we're looking for is a strength within the shape. So we have soft tone here, strong at the root, soft on the end and a strong tone then through here. So I think if we look visually, when you look at the, you look at the tones, you can just see how, when it's kind of dried and styled, it's going to be really, really beautiful. So we're going to head over to the other side now. Again, still working on a hair and bone technique. So we're going to take our kind of soft, kind of woody, So again, working kind of back away from the face, we're in the section. And then blend it in the hands. I mean, don't worry if the color touches to other sections, it's fine. The reason being is that we there's not a massive difference within the tones. And again, we're going to cre we're creating kind of tones and different kind of depths and different colors within it. Again, so we're, we're kind of thinking tie-dye in the clothes, like, you know, maybe some kind of a tie-dye kind of in the hair. We still need to make sure that it still looks pretty and beautiful. See, we still have a little kind of triangle at the so we're gonna work this section. So here we're gonna work a very soft um, coral tones. We're at 10 and 5 with all of our mixed tones. So again, we'll come back. So using our fingers, we're going to Take the root colour, smudge it to the end.
texture section here, we're gonna take our slightly soft pinky tone because we need to think that we had some old kind of color to the front that you, which you can see here. Still have our slight little bit of a greeny tone from our previous color. So like we said, we're gonna work with that. So this is our last section. So with Sophie's haircut, what we want to do is to create a kind of background color underneath. So what we're using is our soft kind of our woody pinky tone, which would be um, our 897 and our A-stroke 3-4. Uh, it's gonna be a very kind of soft tone that's gonna create a shadow for all the other kind of colors to sit on that are gonna kind of frame Sophie's face. You can kind of see when you look at the town, it's quite visual. Kind of reminds you of being a kid. When you kind of paint it like paint by numbers, I suppose. So again, this will come back from the face. And this kind of section I want to bring through because I do want to create some depth. That is our top section done. So I'm just gonna kind of spin Sophie around and she can kind of just tilt her head. So you can see the tones, like everything that's kind of happening. It's so visual. Um, and then when this is rinsed, you're just gonna see so many beautiful tones and it really kind of just brings the color to life. So simply now I'm just gonna remove, it's like having little colored little worms put in the hair. So visual and again sitting, you know, this is very easy and adaptable to the salon floor. Ooh. A little, little fly away there. So simply what we're going to do is through these sides is just emulsify the colour. Just use your hands. So as remember Sophie's hair is damp, so we're not emulsifying it into dry hair. So we want to just create these kind of textures, be very kind of soft and always kind of moving down the hair. Just because remember this is, has been pre-bleached, so treat with care. So you can see I'm just moving down and what we're getting is these are pinky tones are, you know, meeting our coral tones and we're just getting this really soft kind of beautiful kind of colors happening. A little bit of interest is happening in the hair. Remember, we're gonna do a color wash over the whole thing as well to really blend it. So I'm gonna just move Sophie around again. We're pretty much, sorry. <laughs> gonna do the same, is that okay? You can see that, yeah. So really, Emulsifier colours in, bring them to the front. So 
today we're done. So I'm just gonna give her a 360. And then I just tilt her head slightly forward from the selfie. So you can see all of her colors happening in there. So we're just gonna let it develop. Thank you. So this is my interpretation of the Colour Artist of the Year category for Trend Vision 2019. So you can see that the look is quite 80s inspired. We've got like the tie dye, we've got the socks with the tie dye shoes, or the tie dye shoes with the sandals. Again, bringing like kind of pastel colours, pastel tones, and almost denim feel to the clothes and then into the hair. So you can see again with Sophie's hair, what, what we wanted to create was light and shade and almost a denim look, a tie dyed look into the hair, almost like with a stonewash feel. Um, so I really hope you enjoy the look. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.